So a couple years back, I was at this business seminar and somebody asked the best piece of advice for someone whose life is completely off track and they wanted to reinvent themselves. And the guy said that he hired Gary Vaynerchuk before he was super famous for a large sum of money for a day. And this is Gary's main piece of advice for creating an amazing life that you actually love. And he said, figure out your perfect day and then go about reverse engineering it. Now in this video, I'm gonna give a very short journaling exercise you can do to figure out what the perfect day looks like, but more importantly, how you wanna feel on that perfect day. What's up guys, Alex Hine here, author of the book Master of the Day. So I think the big mistake that people make is they think kind of tactically, like what do they want the outside aspects of their life to look like, right? So like being as a guy, I could be like, oh yeah, my perfect day involves going on a date with super hot girls all the time. And this is kind of the outside in approach to living. And the problem is like with the dating example, everyone's been on a date with someone that was great on paper, but there was no connection or no spark. There was no feeling behind it. And so with the perfect day exercise, the most important thing is to visualize from the inside out how you want it to feel first, and then what you want the outside details to look like. So first we're gonna walk through one part on how you wanna feel, and then what you like specifically want the material aspects of your life to look like. So I think the very first thing in figuring out essentially what your dream life is, is how do you want it to feel internally? So you wake up in the morning, you get out of bed, and I want you to figure out what time are you getting out of bed, and how do you feel? Some people like me, they like getting up and knowing that they have one hour to get their stuff together and then get out of the house and get to work. And other people, they know that they like that feeling of not being pushed and stressed and rushed. And so they want to take until 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock to get out of the house. So think about or feel how you want that to feel in the morning. For me, I'll go through my perfect day so you can kind of get a feel for exactly what I mean by this. So my perfect day in the morning involves I wake up probably around 8 without using an alarm and I feel excited. The very first emotion I feel is excitement because the projects I'm going to be working on that day I feel like are meaningful and they're purposeful and they're worthwhile. In other words, if I did not live, if I was not on planet Earth, these things would not have had the impact and they would not have ever been created. So I get up, I come out to my desk, I pour some tea, and for 30 to 45 minutes, all I do is I just review my goals and the things that I'm interested in and I'm passionate about and the things I want to create. And I feel a sense of excitement looking forward to the day. And the reason I put this emotion first is because for most of my 20s, this excitement was like the antidote to the lack of excitement I felt my whole 20s. I constantly felt like I had to drag myself throughout the day that the mornings were the worst part of the day because it was signaled a long day I wasn't excited for, I wasn't inspired about, it had no impact, and there had no, it had no purpose. It was like if I died, it wouldn't even matter. And so what I highly like to feel internally is that what I'm doing matters for other people and for the world. So that's the primary dominant emotion for me. And after I have this little morning routine, I see myself going to a beautiful office filled with windows and sunlight where I see patients for most of the day. And I see myself attracting the kind of people that are fun, that are positive, that want to change their own lives, and that are showing up and they want to do the work. They're not people that are hypochondriacs, that want to complain and blame, that are coming to test me or have something to prove, but people that really want help. So I'm basically, even as my patients, I'm visualizing them being people I like to be around, even as friends. Later in the day, I see myself going to the gym and then going out to dinner or grabbing drinks with a friend or a colleague or someone else that I, I like being around and I respect. And then at night, I kind of leave it open for an event that feels, again, exciting, like I'm meeting new people and that there's always something fun and new to do. Because for me, the primary driver of becoming an entrepreneur was that I love variety. I love the feeling of excitement, working on very different projects. And that, you know, the next 80 years of my work life, I will always have new things where I'm reinventing and testing and trying things out. So when you know the dominant emotion you're trying to get from your life, some people it's consistency. They just want to have a nice job they show up to every day, 
a nice partner they marry or whatever. And that they want is that consistent, everything's smooth. No super high highs, no super low lows. They just want that consistency. But first, I want you to start with the dominant emotion you want to feel. And when you have that on paper, you can understand what your perfect day looks like. And so for me, I then throw in other things like we talked about in the previous video on I want to spend three months of the year in Paris or in a different location. And that to me is just breaking up life, at injecting more fun, being able to speak another language and injecting more variety into my brain and building off of a little bit of downtime. And so that feeling is, okay, maybe I've been doing a little bit of the same thing for nine months. Well, what am I going to do now? to re-inject the excitement and the variety and the, you know, that little, Chris, that little kid on Christmas morning type feel. And for me, regular vacations, once every 100 days, or even a three-month sabbatical per year is the way I want to do that. Now, the second part of your perfect day is obviously, what do you want to do, right? And I think the what do you want to do part typically comes in a few categories. First of all, what fills most of our day is, like Freud said, work and love is most of life. Work, because you're probably going to do it at least nine hours a day for your whole life. And then love, because life is basically about people. Whether it's the person you're dating or the person you marry, kids if you have them or not, your parents, your grandparents. So I want you to think about, okay, what am I doing for work? You win the lotto. You win $500 million. You never have to work again. What are you doing? Visualize that as being the what you do for your perfect day. Because if you do that, you already won the game. Like, there's no amount of money that's going to be like, oh, screw this job, I'm going to quit, I'm out of here. If you enjoy it, then it's infinite, right? There is no pushing required to get you up in the morning. And the second thing is people. What does that look like in the morning? If you want to be married or you are married, what does the morning look like to you? Maybe you want to be up early and have an hour of complete peace. And then you want to wake up your kids or your partner and then all have breakfast together in a non-rushed way. No one's on their devices. You're all there present. And then in the afternoon and the evenings, what does that really look like? Are you seeing your parents? Are you living near your parents? Are you seeing friends? Are you volunteering your time? Are you going to an orphanage? What does that look like? Like, what are the actual details? The nitty gritty, once you already know the feeling that you want. And for you, maybe the feeling that you want is the feeling of connection or contribution or the feeling that like playing with your kids is something that it's like the one non-goal or work-related thing you do that's important and meaningful, but it has nothing to do with you. It's for them. So I want you to think tactically. What is the thing that excites you the most you want to do every day? What are the people you want to be around? And what kind of people do you want to be around? And then think about blocking out your ideal day. And just because the average person works nine hours doesn't mean you should think like that. In two to three hours per day, I make more than I made in my last full-time job. So if your perfect day only involves working four hours, it's possible. I literally do it. Figure out a way to actually turn that into your reality. So if you decide that you want to work four hours a day and run around with woodland creatures, then you can do it. And I think the thing is, whatever you think is possible is going to be what you end up doing. So my biggest piece of advice is definitely echoing what Gary said, where figure out the perfect day. And for me, it's how do I want to feel? And what do I want to do? And the biggest two, like the biggest two chunks for me, the big two stones are work and love, as Freud said. So if you can figure out those two things, what do you want to do for your work? Or what is your work with a capital W? And then the kind of people you want to be around. If you can figure out those two things, I feel like you've got most of life covered and it's all gravy. So before you go, I want you to do that exercise and let me know what comes up for you. All right, guys, I hope that helps. Best way to stay in touch is to grab the free personal development and weight loss challenge at modernhealthmonk.com forward slash YouTube. And you can check out the last two videos that came out here and here. And make sure you do that journaling exercise. And there are two other videos on the same topic that's related. So you can check those out as well.